In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the macro recorder, which is one of the most powerful features available to us in Excel. So the macro recorder actually allows us to generate VBA code automatically. What we do is we run the recorder and then we do regular Excel operations. We can enter values into cells, we can uh, highlight them, color them, delete columns, delete rows, generate pivot tables, etc. And the macro recorder observes our actions and it translates those actions and those keystrokes and those mouse clicks into valid VBA code. So you may be thinking, what's the point of learning VBA if the computer can automatically write it for us? Well, the macro recorder is functional, but it's also flawed, inefficient, and really prone to error. So it should never really be used for real macros. However, it's a really great resource for learning and exploring the syntax of the VBA language. Because whenever you don't know how to do something, but you know how to do it in, the, in Excel, in the main interface, you can always just run the recorder, execute that process, and then take a look at how it would handle that procedure, how it would generate that code. That code is not guaranteed to be perfect. It's actually quite likely that it's going to have a lot of flaws and inefficiencies, but it's going to give you a foundation for understanding the, the general gist of things, which is why the macro recorder is not just a tool for beginners, it's a tool that's used by professional VBA developers as well. Excel has a lot of moving parts to it, including VBA, so it's a really great tool uh, for understanding some of those foundations whenever you're diving into something new. So here's how we can record a macro. On the developer tab, there is a button here called record macro. And when we click that, we're going to have this record macro dialog box pop up. There are four options available for us here and I want to dive into each one, one by one. The first one at the very top is macro name, which is a mandatory field. And here's where we want to assign a macro, uh, our macro an actual name. And ideally that name should be descriptive. It should describe what the macro is doing. So the default naming scheme here, as you can see, is going to be macro one, then macro two, then macro three, which doesn't really tell us what the macro or procedure is doing. So a good name is descriptive. It usually starts with a verb. It explains what it is that we're going to be doing. What we're going to be actually recording here is just the process of writing our name into a cell and then doing some formatting with it. So I'm gonna call this macro write and format name. Now there are a couple rules when it comes to macro names. The macro name must start with a letter. So here I'm starting it with a capital W. Uh, it cannot be a cell address, which means you can't call a macro something like A1. Uh, a macro name also cannot be longer than 256 characters. You really should never need that many because you want your names to be as short and sweet as possible. And your macro names also cannot contain spaces. So notice what I've done here is use something called camel case formatting. A camel case formatting is where you capitalize the first letter of each word. We can't have spaces, so how can we distinguish where one word ends and the next one begins? We simply capitalize the first letter of each word. That's called camel case formatting, and that's what a lot of VBA developers use due to the constraint of not being able to use spaces. The next thing we have here is shortcut key, which is an optional keyboard shortcut that we can set for this macro. So we can always run this macro from a list of macros in a dialog box, but we can also configure it to automatically run whenever we press something on the keyboard. So there is one big caveat that we have, that we have to watch out for here. Many of the keyboard shortcuts in Excel uh, that involve just the control key plus some kind of letter are already taken. For example, control plus S is save, control plus B is bold, control plus I is italic, uh, control plus O is open. So if we just put a regular letter here, it's very likely that we're going to overwrite one of those existing keyboard shortcuts. Now that is not going to break Excel. It's, it's only limited to this workbook. So if you open any other workbook, those keyboard shortcuts will work just fine. However, you never really want to uh, overwrite those shortcuts uh, because they're really part and parcel of Excel and many, many people use them. So we never really want to replace an existing shortcut. So we want to have some kind of solution here where we're guaranteed not to overwrite something that already has a keyboard shortcut. The way we do that here is by always including shift uh, in our keyboard shortcut. If we do control plus shift plus some kind of letter, those combinations are, are not taken up by Excel. So for example, let's say I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control plus shift plus W. I know that's not going to be taken. So what I can do here is just click into this box, hold shift, press W, and we're going to set up that as the keyboard shortcut once this macro is recorded. 
The next option we have here is where we want to actually store this macro. We have three options available here. We're going to stick with the default one, which is this workbook. It's going to save the macro code uh, in a what's called a module that's going to be directly connected to this workbook. So we're not gonna be able to access this macro from any other Excel file. It's going to be tied to this one. Another option is new workbook, which is automatically going to create a new workbook as soon as the macro is done recording and store our code there. And finally, the third option is this personal macro workbook. The personal macro workbook is a hidden file that is opened whenever you open Excel. Whenever any file is opened in Excel, Excel loads this personal macro workbook. So whenever you want to use a macro across every workbook, whenever you have some kind of functionality that is common, for example, you may want to have a common styling across all of your workbooks. You, you like a certain font at a certain size with a certain bolding. You can store that macro in a personal macro workbook and then it'll be available no matter what workbook you're in. It's not tied to any workbook. It kind of exists in this global scope, this global space where you can rely on it from any workbook. We don't need to do that here because this code is really gonna be strictly limited to this lesson, so we don't need to make it global and available everywhere. So I'm just gonna stick with this workbook for now. This option, by the way, is required as is the macro name. The shortcut key is optional. And our final field description is also optional. And description, of course, is where we can offer an optional explanation for what the macro does. This is really helpful if someone else is going to be taking a look at the macro code later. They can see a brief comment or a brief description about what it's doing. So right here, I'm just gonna write what this macro is going to do. We're going to be writing our name to cell A1 and then just formatting it with a couple aesthetic flourishes. So I'm just gonna write a description of write name to cell A1 and format it. All right, now here's where we have to be really, really careful because as soon as I press okay, this macro is going to be re recording. And that means that anything we do in the workbook, anything, whether we move to one cell, if we bold something, if we delete something, any kind of operation like saving, all of those steps are going to be recorded. The macro recorder is sort of like a video camera that's watching everything we're doing and is kind of recording it to cassette and then replaying it whenever we run the macro again. So we have to be really careful because if we make some kind of mistake, the recorder has no clue that that's a mistake. It thinks it's just a regular action. Uh, so we have, to be, we have to be very careful and make sure that we're executing the steps in their proper order and doing everything correctly as soon as we press OK. So let's get started. I'm going to click OK and now the macro is recording. There's two ways that we know that it's recording. The first is this thing is going to change to stop recording, and that, of course, is a button that we can click whenever we're done with all of the steps that we want to take. The second place where we can stop the recording is down here. We're going to see this square, sort of like a stop button, if you will, and this is going to also stop recording. You can see the pop-up tooltip says a macro is currently recording. Click to stop recording. So right now I haven't done anything, but if I do anything at this point, it's going to constitute the code in our macro. So here's what I want to do. The first thing I want to do is to click into cell A1, and then I'm just going to write my name in here. You can write your name or whatever you'd like. So as soon as I type my name in, what I'm actually gonna press here is going to be control plus enter. That's going to allow us to enter the value but stay in the exact same cell. So it's not gonna move down. So control plus enter is gonna enter the value, stay in the same cell. Right now, let's go ahead and add some artistic flourishes to the cell. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bold the cell. I can do that with control B. So control B. I'm then gonna change the font. So let's go to the home tab right here on the ribbon. Let's change the font to my favorite font, Comic Sans MS. You can, of course, choose whatever font you'd like yourself, Comic Sans MS. And let's also change the font size to 24. Let's do one more thing. Let's add a background to the cell. That's the paint bucket icon right here. This yellow color is totally fine. Let's just click that. And let's say this is our favorite format. This is how we like our name to appear on every professional corporate report that we're going to be submitting to our boss. So we're done recording the macro. Let's call it a day. So let's go to the developer tab and click stop recording. And that's it, our macro is now recorded, it's stored. We don't actually see the code yet, we're gonna explore it in just a second, but all of those steps have been recorded and we can now replay them from the beginning. So let's go back to a blank spreadsheet. What I'm going to do here is just delete column A to get rid of all the changes that we just did. So highlight that, click delete. I'm just gonna click into a random cell and let's run this macro twice now to make sure it's working. The first way we can run it is from this macros box that we see right here on the developer tab. When we explored this in the previous lesson, it was actually empty, but now we see we have one macro listed exactly with the name that we gave it, right in format name. It's selected in blue. 
So we can click this run button and that's going to execute the macro. So it's going to do all the steps that we did. We clicked into a cell, we put in a value, we bolded it, etc. with the font. It's going to do all those steps from the beginning. So when I click run, there we go. This is exactly where we finished recording the macro. All of those steps have been executed instantaneously. By the way, you can access this macros box that we just saw by using the keyboard shortcut Alt plus F8. That's going to bring it up if you want a shortcut, uh, just a little bit of a uh, quicker way to get there. All right, now let's try activating this macro with the keyboard shortcut that we assigned. So once again, I'm going to delete this column. That's just to make sure that we actually see the results. Otherwise, we wouldn't know that anything has actually changed. So let's go ahead and delete this. And our keyboard shortcut was Control Shift plus W. So I'm gonna hold Control, hold Shift, press W. Here we go, there we go. The macro has once again ran and we are back to where we ended up at. All right, so now the time has come to actually take a look at the VBA code. By all means, don't feel like you have to understand everything that's going on, but it's a good idea to take a look at what we just generated to see how VBA processed all of our actions. So there's two ways that we can get to our code. The first is just clicking the Visual Basic icon to open the Visual Basic Editor. We'll get there in a second. And then if we go to Macros right here and we select our macros, we can also click Edit and that will launch us automatically into the Visual Basic Editor as well. So let's click Edit. And here is the Visual Basic Editor. This might be our very first introduction to the VBE. So if this is your first time seeing it, congratulations. This is a totally separate program from Microsoft Excel. And this is where all of our macro code is actually being stored. And this is where the actual macro recorder has placed all of its automatically generated code. So let me go ahead and expand this so we can see it a little bit. And I think this should be our entire macro, that's it. So this is all of the code that's been generated. You can see here uh, a whole bunch of keywords and syntax that you're unfamiliar with. Don't worry, we're gonna dive into it later throughout the course and, and every single thing is gonna be explored in much greater detail. But let me just go through and offer you a bird's eye picture, a big overview of what's going on here. We're creating a macro here or a procedure called write and format name. Right here we have uh, what, what are called comments, which are just lines that are ignored by VBA whenever it's running this procedure. And these procedures, of course, are run from top to bottom. So one line is executed uh, at a time and it just proceeds from the top to the very bottom one line at a time. These lines are ignored. Uh, that's what the apostrophes do at the very beginning. And these are where we actually put the comments. And you'll notice that this is where our actual description is going to be listed, as well as the keyboard shortcut that we defined. So if some other VBA developer is looking at our code later, they can identify how they can actually run this macro with their keyboard. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. Again, very briefly, uh, not, not, not an in-depth dive, just a big picture overview. We're selecting a range here. We are navigating to cell A1, which is exactly what we did. Here you can see we're setting the value into the cell. That was my name that I wrote. Here we can see with the bold keyword that I'm actually making that selection, that cell bold right here. And right here, this is a really, really complex part, but this is the part where we're actually setting the name of the font and the size. You can start to see uh, and hopefully get a sense of how much extra code VBA is generating. This is tying back to that point I made at the beginning of the lesson about all the inefficiencies of the Mac recorder. So what we wanted to do here is to actually change the font name and the font size. But VBA doesn't necessarily understand that completely because it can, it can think of things both in positives and in negatives. So when you're changing the font, you can think of that as a positive change where we're changing something from one value to another. But VBA can also think, hey, whenever you're changing the font, you're not changing the strike through property and you're not changing the shadow, for example, and it's preserving all of those things that we didn't change because it's kind of taking a picture or a snapshot of what that uh, cell looks like at the time. And that includes a lot of things that we're not actually focused on. We didn't really care about the shadow or the strike through, but VBA recorded the, the state of that cell at the time. And so it included all of this extraneous extra data in the, in the macro, in the procedure code, that is actually irrelevant to what we wanted to do. It's still functional. We just saw that it properly did everything that we wanted it to do, but it's also recording a whole bunch of extra stuff that we don't need. That's what I meant when I talked about how the macro recorder tends to be inefficient. So here we're changing the name of the font. Here it's Comic Sans MS. And here we can see with the same font, we're also changing the size to 24. And again, whenever we're changing the size to 24, VBA is thinking we're doing a whole bunch of other things, including things that we're not doing. And finally, this section right here is where we're actually setting the yellow background. So 
All in all, if you take a look from the top to the bottom, this is probably about 25, maybe more, 30, 40 lines of code. And we really don't need this many lines of code uh, in order to do something simple like this. However, if this is your first time ever working around in VBA, you can sort of start to get a sense of how this can be helpful because you can take a look at, at syntax like this and say, okay, I don't know anything about VBA yet, but this says font and this says bold. So maybe this has something to do with making the font bold in that specific cell. And so you can use this generated code to kind of train yourself to explore different parts of the syntax, uh, different things that we're affecting and learn that way, kind of pick things up piece by piece depending on how the macro recorder does it. So again, just because the macro recorder is often criticized and made fun of by the VBA community doesn't mean that it's a weak tool. It's a really, really, really great, powerful, useful tool. It's just a learning tool. It's a foundation for understanding how uh, something might work in VBA, but you shouldn't use it to actually make your final macro because as we can see here, it tends to be inefficient. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.